Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Coca Van. That's right, it does translate to cock with wine. But don't worry, we're going to use chicken. I mean, come on, you can't find rooster in a grocery store these days. But anyway, despite its very French and fairly inappropriate name, this braised chicken and wine dish is incredibly delicious and unbelievably simple. And if you're a fan of Fonz, stay tuned. We're going to use three Fonz to make this recipe. But before we get to that, let's go ahead and start by seasoning our chicken. And for this, I like to use bone-in, skin-on chicken thighs. And I have six here, and these were huge. So they were a little bigger than I'm used to. And we're going to go ahead and season both sides generously with kosher salt and freshly ground black pepper. And what we'll do when those are sufficiently seasoned, we'll just set those aside. You can just leave them out at room temperature. And we're ready to move on to the bacon step. So I'm going to toss a whole bunch of sliced bacon into a cold skillet set on medium heat. And what we're going to do is cook this bacon until crisp. And as I mentioned earlier, we're going to be doing multiple fonds here. So this is fond number one, the bacon caramelization. And when we get to that point, let's go ahead and remove that bacon with a slotted spoon, leaving the fat in the pan. And at this point, we're going to crank our heat up to high and brown the chicken. So I'm going to place that in skin side down. And I mentioned earlier, I was using particularly ginormous thighs for this. So my pan's a little crowded here. And when you combine a crowded pan with a surface that's already kind of sticky from cooking the bacon, you're going to have a very good possibility of the skin sticking, which as you can see, mine kind of did. But you know what? It really wasn't that bad. Most of them were okay, except that last one that pretty much lost all its skin. But I was stubborn. I scraped it off the bottom and put it on top where it would have been. But that's okay. That didn't bother me at all. Do I seem bothered? No. And the reason is because this is going to be braised in that red wine sauce, it really doesn't matter. So you're going to brown that skin side best you can. You're going to flip it over for a minute, brown the other side. And then we're going to remove the chicken from the pan. And you'll see we've created our second fond. First the bacon fond, then the chicken fond. And then I want you to drain all but one tablespoon of the fat. We want to leave a little bit in there. Because the next step is our third and final fond that we're going to make with the vegetables. So I'm going to toss in some sliced shallots, some diced onion, which traditionally should be pearl onions. And I'm also going to toss in a whole bunch of quartered mushrooms. And we'll also toss in a big pinch of salt. And of course, many of you know what's going to happen here. The salt's going to draw water out of the mushroom and the onions, which is going to leak out and deglaze our double fond from the chicken and the bacon. And then that goodness is going to get absorbed by the vegetables, which will then caramelize themselves to form our third and final fond. I mean, look at that. How ridiculously good is that going to be? And then once our vegetable mixture looks like that, we're going to make a very small, very quick roux. So I'm going to toss in a little chunk of butter. Hey, this is a French recipe after all. And then just a little bit of flour, like a rounded teaspoon. And we'll stir that in and we'll just cook that flour for about a minute just to take the raw edge off. And if you want, you can double that roux. If you want a thicker sauce, something closer to a gravy, that's not my style. All right, I want more of a lighter style kind of pan sauce texture to this. So we'll cook that flour in the butter for a minute. And then one of the stars of the show, the red wine. We will deglaze with some decent red wine. Okay, you're only going to use about a third of the bottle here. So you're going to get stuck drinking the other two thirds. So get something decent. And we'll take our wooden spoon and we'll stir that in, obviously scraping all that triple fond goodness from the bottom. And I'm going to stand there stirring until it comes back to a simmer. It's going to kind of thicken up a little bit. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and throw in some herb, some fresh thyme sprigs. And if you want to do that thing with that string where you tie them all together so you can just fish them out at the end, go ahead. Or you can do what I do and not do that. Those are pretty easy to find and pick out later. And then next up, we're going to make it rain bacon, whatever you have left, because you probably ate some of that, didn't you? How did I know? I hear things. So let's stir in that bacon. And I'm going to guess and say that red wine has reduced by about a third, something like that. It's been simmering like that for a few minutes. And then for our last steps here, let's go ahead and pour in some chicken stock or broth. And it probably wouldn't be a bad idea at this point to make sure your oven is preheated to 375. And then last but not least, before this goes in the oven, we will nestle our chicken thighs back in. Because as soon as this mixture heats up again and starts simmering, we're going to go ahead and pop it in. And if you want to give it a little base before it goes in, go ahead. I did. Seems appropriate. And then we're going to place that pan uncovered in the center of our 375 degree oven for about an hour or until the chicken's tender. And speaking of optional basting, about halfway through, I do like to open the oven and give those a little basting. Just go ahead and spoon over that braising liquid. And again, that's optional. You don't have to. You decide. You are the ace of baste. And after about one hour at 375, mine look like this. And that looks pretty good, but kind of greasy. But don't worry, that's the next step. So we will remove the chicken to a warm serving platter. If you want to throw a lid on that or some foil to keep it warm, not a bad idea. And we'll place our braising liquid on high heat, bring it up to a simmer. 
And what we'll do is we'll reduce that down for about five minutes. I want to concentrate those flavors. I want it to thicken up a little bit. And while that's happening, of course, you're going to skim all the excess fat off the top. Okay, some recipes we leave it, but this is not one of those. And of course, if you see any of those thyme sprigs, pull those out. And that is pretty much it, except of course, you're going to taste for seasoning, especially salt. Other than a pinch with the mushrooms and some on the chicken, we have not seasoned this because there's salt in the bacon. There's a little bit of salt in the stock. So you got to be careful, but you'll want to taste and adjust here. And once it looks great and tastes great, you're ready to serve up. So I'm going to transfer that sauce over those still warm thighs, possibly garnish with a little more fresh thyme. And it was smelling so fantastic. I had to stop and eat some before the final plating. And who knew something cooked with onions, bacon, mushrooms, and red wine would be tasty. But it was. Of course, the only problem with eating out of the pan here is you can't see that amazingly beautiful sauce. So let me plate this up properly on some garlic mashed potatoes. I did some little gem lettuce with a mustard vinaigrette to kind of balance the richness. And you people that are freaking out right now, go ahead and use a side plate. But I'm not afraid to get some sauce on my lettuce. I mean, come on. But anyway, like I've already said, just incredibly delicious. And don't get me wrong, as good as that chicken is, this would be worth making just for the onion, bacon, mushroom mixture alone. It's that good, all right? So if you really want to experience, culinarily speaking, what it truly means to rock out with your you-know-what out, I really hope you give this recipe a try. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.